This reminds me of an elongated version of Christmas Eve in uh, 2018, when the market was ferocious. And uh, by the time we got to January 4th, the Fed had changed its mind about rate cuts. It changed its mind about the way they were going to un unwind the balance sheet. So they do change quickly, despite what they say just a few weeks before that. Um, if this continues and we start to see more pressure on top line revenue growth, we have mm -hmm. more companies coming out. And if we start to hear about layoffs, because what are companies going to do if they begin to think about layoffs, the Fed is going to come in. Mike, are we watching the death of the bull market? No, I don't think we're off. First of all, let me go back to what was just mentioned about the, the Fed's response function. I think there's two things about the Fed. Uh, first of all, it's conditional, and second, it's interpretive. So the first thing to do is they need to assess economic conditions. And the second issue is you have to interpret what they think the impact is going to be in terms of how the fallout is, in terms of how deep it means impacts growth, what it means for the financial system. So at this point, I think what the Fed is still doing, they're in the assessment phase. They're still going through and processing, you know, how much fallout will it be. Right now, what we see is the, the domestic economy has actually held up very well. The biggest issue that I'm, I think is confronting Fed officials is, is really the tightening of financial conditions and what could that mean to growth going forward. But no, I, I don't think this is the end of the bull market. I think what we're facing right now is a period of extreme and sudden sell-off in the markets in response to an, un, an unknown external threat. We, we do know what coronavirus is, but we don't know exactly how it manifests itself. No one can quite quantify exactly what the impact will be. So until we get a little bit more clarity on the depth of this crisis in terms of how far this health crisis is spreading and whether or not it's sort of broken containment, I think it's premature to talk about bear markets or recessions. Mike, can the Fed not respond here? I mean, that sounds like where you're going, and it sounds like you're kind of siding with what Fed officials have said, which is that it would be premature to do anything just yet. Now, what I'm saying, Steve, is that I, I think what the Fed will do in their response function is right now I think they're still in the processing mode. I think to pre-commit to action before they've actually seen anything show up in the data, uh, I, I don't think that's in, in, the, in the Fed's thinking. I think what they will do, Steve, is that they'll continue to look at what's happening in terms of not only here globally, what the fallout is, I'm, I'm sorry, in the U.S., but also globally, and take that into consideration. And then the most important thing in the short term, of course, is these tightening financial conditions. Is this causing stress in the market, and is this going to wind up translating into a deeper economic outcome? Quincy, as I'm going to come back to this, I saw you shaking your head. You don't think it could be the end of the, of the bull market, but I point out two more days like today, and you're at a 20 percent decline, which is actually the, the tipping point for, for a so-called bear market. As more and more companies in the United States start to come out and say, here are the numbers that we're looking at, could this accelerate the decline as those companies start to put hard numbers or hard estimates on what they're seeing in their businesses. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because right now it's all speculation, now mostly. It's, now it's all speculation. I, I think that the worry is if we want to look at, at, a, at a bear market or, or going into a recession is we know that they're going to hold back spending. We knew that. They were going to hold back spending. It's whether or not they decide to let people go. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, that feeds onto itself, especially since 68 percent of our economy is consumer spending. And that's the biggest worry that you have. Because in terms of the market, one of the things we're seeing on the retail level is that retail investors are, I don't want to say calm, they're watching this, but from what we hear about from advisors is they're calling for guidance. And they're being told, look, we've gone through this, it, it, it's not 20 percent yet, which is going into another phase. But things can change rapidly. In other words, if you leave the market and go into cash, something could come either from the Fed or the government. Or, by the way, this virus stops. This is man and the market against a virus. And that's why it's, it, it's that. But companies don't care about laying off. They will do it if they believe that it's going to help their bottom line. And that sets the stage for something else. And that's where the Fed, I think, is watching to see what companies are doing. I think they're talking to CEOs. You know, their beige book is made up of anecdotal evidence. Right. It, it would be hard for me to believe they are not speaking to small business owners and to CEOs to see what their plans are. So are either of you, and Michael, I'll ask you, but hearing panic from clients, you know, those kind of calls that, that say, hey, take me out of this market, or why did you have me in it? Uh, yeah, it, look, we're certainly hearing anxiety on the part of, of clients because when you, when you see this kind of a, a sudden sharp fall, it's not surprising that, that it certainly gets everyone's attention. We're, we're certainly not seeing any panic moves. One of the things we've been counseling clients for a long time is you, you want to be not caught in these, in these short-term volatility traps. What you want to do is focus on, okay, what we're seeing over the horizon that spans 6 and 12 months. So we, we haven't seen that kind of response function. I'll go back to what was said just a few minutes ago. I think 
you know, we have to put these things in perspective. Look, there's a certain amount of humility that has to come with this process. There, there are things we still don't know. I think what the markets are starting to price in right now is some pretty extreme outcomes. I think what you're starting to see is the market is already discounting that this is perhaps reaching a breakout phase in terms of disease. Secondly, they're already discounting that this is going to have a significant and more sustained impact on economic growth. And, and those two are not certain yet. In fact, what we could well see is if this proves to be contained, and if we do see that this is more of a transient impact on the economy that lasts for a quarter or two, then what I think you'll see is markets will steady. And I also think what you'll see is corporate earnings, although they likely will be impacted, we will see, again, a recovery in corporate earnings probably in the second half of the year. I mean